There is nothing more fascinating in MMA than the late career turnaround. A fighter spending years finding their feet only to put it all together when many had written them off. Today we look at one of the biggest examples of this trope in recent years. How a two-time UFC reject transformed herself into one of the baddest women on the planet. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of Larissa Pacheco. On April 13, 2012, Larissa Pacheco made her pro debut against Raquel Pitbull for the Maratuba fight promotion in northern Brazil. Pacheco was bitten by the combat bug at an early age, training Muay Thai on a daily basis in her youth before transitioning to MMA at the age of 17. Pacheco made her early name as a grappler, winning five of her first eight fights by submission with her lanky frame, proving a hazard for her regional competition. The run of form led Pacheco to earn a contract with Jungle Fight, the preeminent promotion for rising South American prospects. It was the Jungle Fight that Pacheco claimed her first marquee win, a match in 2013 against future UFC star Irani Aldana. Despite her rather crude striking, Pacheco gained the upper hand on Aldana over the first two rounds, before handing the Mexican her first career loss in brutal fashion. Upper lido, combinação de cruzado com direto, bambion entrou, caixão e vela. Pacheco would defend her belt four months later against 2-0 Lizzie Ann Silveira, by which point the fighter was seen by critics as a promising but still incredibly raw prospect. Most believe Pacheco would be best served remaining at Jungle Fight short term. But when the UFC came calling later that year, the 20-year-old couldn't resist a jump to the big stage. In September 2014, Jessica Andrade had been set to face Valerie Letourneau on the main card of Fight Night Brasilia. But when Letourneau withdrew from the fight due to injury, Pacheco was drafted in as a short-notice replacement. Despite a considerable size advantage, Pacheco was immediately overwhelmed by Andrade. Being taken down in the early stages and after fighting off multiple submission attempts, succumbed to a guillotine in the middle of the first round. Pacheco There's taps! The tap. Jessica Andrade bounces Larissa Pacheco from the ranks of the unbeaten. Pacheco had lost her zero in dominant, one-sided fashion. With the fighter admitting the short notice added with the pressure of competing in the UFC for the first time had an adverse effect on her performance. The octagon jitters may have swayed the UFC to give Pacheco a second chance, taking on kickboxing ace Jermaine Durandame at UFC 185. Durandame would piece Pacheco apart for the majority of the fight, with the Iron Lady breaking the Brazilian's arm as she attempted to block a first round head kick. With her defense breached and a distinct striking disadvantage, Pacheco's night ended in inevitable fashion. She's gonna finish it stop right this here. Fight. Stop it the is fight. all over! Good stop. Jermaine Durandame! Pacheco was forced to undergo multiple surgeries to repair the damage to her arm, and despite being linked to a match with Lauren Murphy, she was released by the UFC later that year. Pacheco would later express regret at signing for the promotion, admitting she lacked the maturity to handle the big stage, and that attempting to cut to 135 had an adverse effect on her performance. The damage from the Durandame fight proved more severe than expected, as Pacheco spent the next three years attempting to recuperate from her injuries. During this time, Pacheco turned her attention to philanthropy, working alongside MMA pioneer Erica Paez for a woman's self-defense project, as well as making a cameo appearance in a Brazilian soap opera. Pacheco's heart, however, remained in combat sport, and with her arm fully recovered, attempted to reboot her faltering career, this time as a featherweight. Pacheco made her return for Watch Out Combat against future UFC fighter Carol Rosa. Pacheco showed no sign of ring rust, dominating the fight on the ground before finishing her fellow Brazilian by guillotine in the second. The win was enough for the UFC to take a second look at Pacheco, as the fighter was cast for latest installments of the company's reality show, The Ultimate Fighter. Season 28 was built around forming a roster for the UFC's new featherweight division, with some picking Pacheco as a potential dark horse due to her previous UFC experience. The Brazilian's tenure, however, would be short-lived, suffering a first-round stoppage to eventual seasonal winner Macy Chasson. Despite featherweight being virtually non-existent, the UFC washed their hands of the Pacheco experiment, choosing not to sign her to a full-time contract and denying her spot in the show's finale. Having failed twice at the top level and with the opportunities lacking for fighters above 135, Pacheco faced the prospect of career limbo. That was, until an unlikely source turned her career on its head. In 2019, Pacheco bulked up a further 10 pounds to compete in the PFL lightweight tournament. Pacheco's signing, however, was treated as an afterthought, 
Two-time Olympic champion Kayla Harrison had signed for the promotion the previous year, with many seeing the tourney as a glorified showcase for the company's new star. Pacheco would experience the hype firsthand, as the fighter was booked as Harrison's first opponent in May of that year. Harrison used her superior grappling to dominate Pacheco throughout the fight, although the Brazilian took refuge in being the first woman to go the distance with judoka, a fact Harrison took to heart despite her one-sided performance. Pacheco would show her true nature in the months after, scoring a first-round submission over Bobby DeLille before the biggest win of her career against former Strikeforce champion Sarah Kaufman. This led Pacheco to the season finale and a rematch with Harrison on New Year's Eve. Despite vaunting improvements to her grappling, the fight played out like the first, with Harrison taking Pacheco down at will but unable to finish her stubborn opponent, Harrison winning a unanimous decision and the $1 million cash prize in the process. Despite the disappointment, Pacheco's performance saw her invited back to the promotion in 2021, by which point the once lanky grappler had transformed to an all-action knockout artist. She may take a big shot. Oh! Big right hand! Marisa Pacheco puts Elena Kalesnik down and out! After a second knockout of Julia Payetch, all roads pointed towards Pacheco getting a third crack at Harrison until the former bantamweight fell two pounds short of the lightweight limit for her semifinal match with Taylor Guadaro, and was disqualified from the competition. Harrison would claim a second title in straightforward fashion, and after announcing 2022 would be her last tournament, Pacheco knew she had one last chance to avenge her prior losses. Having bulked up further in the offseason, Pacheco picked up where she left off, scoring a trio at first-round knockouts including a second win over Elena Kalashnik. This set the stage for a third clash with Harrison, serving as the main event for the PFL's first ever pay-per-view. Having won the first two fights in comfortable fashion, many expected Harrison to make easy work of Pacheco once again. But longtime MMA journalist Aaron Bronstetter remained insistent the 8-1 underdog would prove a far tougher prospect this time around. I, I think Pacheco is that good. I think that she has a, 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 an incredible amount of power. Um, in, in her in her striking. I, I honestly do. I'm not trying to, to pump the tires of the PFL. I, if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't say it. I just think that Pacheco is a really solid fighter and is the next best thing to Cyborg that Harrison can have. I just don't think not, that enough people know it. Harrison vs. Pacheco 3 took place on November 25th, 2022. Despite being taken down early, Pacheco utilized an active guard to keep Harrison on her toes, throwing several strikes and submissions off her back, and even reversing some of Harrison's takedown attempts, all while lighting the Olympian up whenever the fight returned to the feet. After 25 minutes of scrambles and momentum shifts, the fight went to a judge's decision, where Pacheco, a two-time UFC reject written off in her early 20s, pulled off one of the sport's biggest upsets of recent years. Larissa! Having completed the most recent chapter of her MMA career, Pacheco starts a new one in 2023, as she drops down to 145 to compete in the PFL's new featherweight division, where she's set to face the former Bellator champion, Julia Budd, later this year. Larissa Pacheco's story is both inspirational and cautionary, a fighter who reached the sports summit after years of setbacks and ridicule, but it also shows the pitfalls of jumping to the top level before a fighter is 100% ready. Fans will be curious to see the next chapter of Pacheco's career, and at 28 and entering her physical prime, November's win over Harrison may only be the beginning. <laughs> Watch her lose now out of Jinxter. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell so you never miss a video.